Just exactly how well are Chinese automakers doing in their quest for global dominance? Today, we're going to discuss a little known fact that exports of Chinese gas cars have actually exploded in Russia of all places, taking over from the European brands. Is it true Chinese EV exports to Europe have been growing dramatically, or might there actually be a drop next year due to trade loss? And finally, let's explore where BYD might actually overtake Tesla. So today we have Larry Goldberg with us. He's a regular on the show. He's a serial entrepreneur, investor in Tesla. Thank you very much, Larry. Appreciate you coming on. A lot of fun. Thanks for having me. So this is one of the topics that you're quite interested in. You did a deep dive on this. You started to explore what China's doing, and you shared this fact that I just shared in the intro. So why don't you start and tell me wh why this is important, and then we'll get into some of your slides. Well, you know, firstly, China is Tesla's major export factory. And even though um, the European factory, the Giga Berlin, has fired up, Tesla's exports to Europe are still a very significant percentage of China's uh, output. And there are still some small exports from Tesla in, um, in Fremont. So Europe remains an important component of the China story. Now, whether China can absorb all million cars or so of, of the Shanghai factory is an open question. But nonetheless, Tesla exports to Europe are extremely important, and Tesla exports to Europe from China are extremely important. And finally, Tesla is competing against Chinese manufacturers, and it's a very, very tough competition. The more China manufacturers get to export to Europe, the stronger their position via V Tesla is. So these are very important factors in the Tesla growth story. Question is, can Tesla hold its own against its China's peers? Can China continue to grow its market in Europe? Those are the open questions. It's, it's very complicated from Tesla's perspective because of the factory in Berlin. You know, Tesla's just applied for and is about to receive the approval to grow that factory to a million cars a year. That's a lot of cars. And the question is, does that completely supplant the China story? And if so, can the German factory compete head to head with what's coming from China? Those are the open questions. Well, I'm glad you're here because you're going to answer those questions for us. Um, we just, I just did an interview with Nicholas Colas. He's a third year Wall Street veteran. And he said that he thinks that China might actually, Chinese automakers may not be able to penetrate into Europe uh, or globally, but we know that they've created beachheads. They're now landing there. So tell me what we're looking at here. This is the China auto exports to Europe, and you include Tesla there as well. Go ahead and tell us. So really, um, we have to thank Car Charts. It's an outstanding resource um, on, on um, you know on the on the cloud, and uh, I recommend this website to everybody. Um, I have extracted some figures from them and some figures elsewhere, but what we're looking at are China exports to Europe in the year 2022 and to date for, to 2023, to August actually, mm -hmm. 2023. So if you look at these numbers, you see Tesla as a player. In fact, it's currently the biggest player. And um, the interesting fact is MG, which was a British brand acquired by a Chinese company, is a very big player indeed. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're very successful. Last year when I was in Europe, I saw a lot of MGs on the road. And, you know, they're a very successful brand in Europe. Uh, it harkens back to a British brand, a famous old British brand. Mm -hmm. I, I drove one. I didn't own one, but I drove one. Um, there's a young man in the hometown I came mm -hmm. from an MG uh, sports car. It was an amazing car for its day. For its day. Anyway, um, so right now, Tesla, um, to the end of August, and uh, holds its own right at the top of the pile in terms of exports to Europe. MG are doing amazingly well. But BYD, as you can see, are beginning yeah. to 
And I think we're going to see an amazing explosion of growth from BYD. They have the range of cars. They're doing extremely well with those cars in China because those cars are all, all uh, very well equipped with, you know, the, the latest in sort of in-cabin electronics. And that's what, uh, you know, the Chinese have looked for. And I think it's going to be attractive to the European buyer. So on balance, we see the beginning, just the beginning of the Chinese onslaught. And many think that the Chinese onslaught is going to be very, very uh, um, successful. It's, it, it's easy to see how well Tesla has done with its, uh, with its exports from China to Europe. Now the question is, is that because of the Tesla brand or is it because of the China cost structure? These are very important balancing elements. But, you know, BYD has attracted a lot of ink, a lot of press, and there are a lot of people in Europe looking to BYD, looking for BYD. So it's an open question. Now, there are political implications that we can talk about. But without the political implications, you know, we can understand that the, the the challenge for the European car makers are going to be very, very important. We, we saw what happened when Japan came to Europe and Japan finally, you know, pretty much won that battle. The question is, does China win this battle now? And so when we look at those numbers, it's pretty impressive, it, you know, Financial Times did an analysis of the of the export to Europe from multiple different countries. And, and I'd like to show that slide because that gives us a sense of what's happening. I mean, these are monthly car exports, and we're looking back to 2019, and we'll see that, you know, in 2021, wow. mm -hmm. that's when it started exploding. Well, you say, wow, but a lot of that is, you must understand, a lot of that was Tesla, right? A lot of that was Tesla because the total units, if you look at the total units in 2023, for example, they're just breasting the 350,000. And Tesla was almost 140,000 of those. So that's half of it and MG is the other half. But it's growing at an extraordinary rate, an extraordinary rate. And so, you know, you cannot count these people out. Now, the big challenge, the overwhelming challenge, is the question of trade, you know, trade politics. And trade politics are one of those things that it's almost impossible to predict. You know, Europe could find that China are breaking the trade rate rules that would not be surprising to have Europe find that. In that case, the question is, does that does that cost Tesla its position? And if so, is that the reason why Tesla is working so hard to expand the factory in Germany? And while it may not affect Tesla as directly as it does China, what it does leave Tesla with is, you know, several hundred thousand cars that it has to now add to its China uh, volume. So if we look at what S&P say, about what's coming in Europe, we see that there's a potential challenge. You know, so what S&P are showing is, you know, they're showing that Europe uh, ice car exports uh, and, and they show that, you know, in 2023, and what I don't understand about the 20, you know, if we look at this, let's try and understand the slide. Together. Let, me, let me explain it. Yeah. So, yeah. So the green bar here that starts in 2021, that's the EV exports from China. Uh, just export from China. So you can see it starts small and it's growing. But S&P believes that it's going to fall dramatically in 2024 because there's, look at this paragraph where it says, trade hurdles are emerging. There's this anti-subsidy probe that's been announced by the European Union on EVs imported from China. 
So if that's successful, that is going to just completely kind of stop any growth. And that's what they're saying right here. China's auto export growth is likely to decelerate in 2024. The yellow bar is gas cars. And you can see that it's growing quite a bit. And then the green bar is the EVs. And then the purple bar is passenger vehicles. Um, and that, that's sort of what we're looking at here. So yeah, what's well, the likelihood of this anti-subsidy probe? The, you know, the confusion in this slide is why, if you look at the, the purple bar of passenger vehicle exports for 2024 estimate, passenger vehicles has to comprise of two things, right. one ice and EV, <laughs> and they've got neither bar, and that's the confusion for me in the slide. So if they had neither bar, where does the purple bar come from? Now, I know where a very large number of those cars are coming, going to, ice cars. They're going to Russia. So wow. Russia's import of cars from Europe has practically stopped dead since the beginning of the, since the war, since the end of 2022. So in 2023, Europe stopped exporting cars to Russia, stopped dead, and China took its place. So China is exporting ice cars on a fairly large scale to Russia, which kind of was a saving grace to the Chinese manufacturers because you know they're under this enormous pressure to move to ice car uh, to EVs from ice cars, they've got this huge ice car production capacity. They were going to have to close it down. Now they're using this capacity to export principally to Russia. So from the Chinese perspective, the war has been a gift. Or the Chinese auto mm -hmm. manufacturer, the war has been a gift. So the slide, I think the slide is missing the component of ice car exports to Europe, which makes up, I think, the purple bar. In, in, you know, and, and so the question really is, are they going to stop all imports of EVs from China? I can't imagine that happening. I can imagine them forcing China to up the price and then that reducing the volume. But, you know, on the other hand, there are other people who, absent a trade, um, a trade fight, are projecting enormous increases for Chinese cars. In fact, you know there are predictions by some by McKinsey, McKinsey amongst others that BYD's penetration into the European market is going to be faster than Tesla's penetration has been, and it's been a record. So Tesla's penetration into the European market has been faster th even than Toyota's. And, and uh, yeah, so this is the slide. It's a little complicated and it'll take a little bit of explaining. But what's interesting is the solid black line is Toyota's penetration in number of years. So if you take the, the x-axis, I'm sorry, the y-axis, T equals zero is the number of years so every year after the first import, the first export of a car from that manufacturer mm -hmm. into Europe, and we see Toyota reaching 300k cars after 20 years, T mm -hmm. plus 20. Right. It took them 20 years to penetrate. Tesla, on the other hand, if you look at Tesla, they reached 300 cars in T plus 14. Now, I dispute that number because I would not include the years of exporting the S and the X. So from my perspective, they reached 300 in T plus 4 or T plus 5. Right. That is the, the, the Model 3 and the Model Y. So I, I dispute these numbers. But that's okay. But look at their BYD projections. Now, the two BYD projections, there, there's... Is IHS, which is a marketing um, uh, uh, firm, uh, marketing analysis, market analysis firm, and there's um, there's um, also um, I think it was Bernstein's analysis. The the 
the yeah this the colored solid the colored dotted line is the ihs analysis the uh, the the black dotted line that is so rapid it says uh, they'll reach 300 in t plus six years mm -hmm. because it, four to eight years t, t plus six years approximately and you know I mean, even if you take the S and the X out of there and you just look at uh, Tesla's um, performance with just the three and the Y, I think that's kind of the speed somewhere in those in those BYD speeds that they're proje projecting. So, you know, it's up to Europe. If Europe wants to start a trade war or a trade in you know, if they want to implement some sort of trade policy, they can hold it up. But absent that, absent that, it's going to be a very, very rough time for the European manufacturers. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com. Are you of the belief that uh, China will be able to go global. Nicholas Colas had said that he doesn't believe that that's the case. The U.S. is going to have really strong protectionist uh, laws, but now there's news that three Chinese automakers are creating factories in Mexico and then take advantage of the trade laws uh, and the trade agreement to be able to sell them to the U.S. What's your thinking? They're absolutely going to do that, and Nick is wrong. I mean, I... I have enormous respect for Nick. I've been following him yeah. for actually for years, and I uh, was very pleased to see him on your program. Actually, I was delighted, and he was fantastic. But I think he's wrong on the score. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is actually for the very reasons that he thinks they're not going to do well. Mm -hmm. The fit and finish of Chinese cars and the quality of the internal fixtures and fittings, and most of all, their focus on electronics or on whiz-bang electronics. They kind of overdo it in a way, but I think it's going to be very appealing to the American market and to the European market, in fact, to the global market. So, you know, I've, I've seen how BYD has penetrated into a market like Israel. And, you know, Tesla took off like a bomb in Israel and took off very well in Israel, but BYD at their price points and their range of cars, they're definitely hitting Tesla very hard in that market. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we cannot underestimate the Chinese automakers. Even Elon said it as well. You br brought up a fact that I did not know, which a few people know right now, which is uh, Russia. China has been able to take over selling cars into Russia. That is incredible. And then, you know, their market is just so big that they can continue to grow, get mass market, get scale, better quality, lower cost. And then they now have beachheads in Europe. So Europe is doing the right thing. They're going to have these um, these uh, laws to try to protect, you know, their own protectionist laws and see what happens there. But it may be, as you're saying, too late. They're there and uh, they've already made progress. That's so very interesting. Thank you for that, Larry. Any last comments? Yeah, I would say that China, that Tesla is a China manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And with all the hallmarks of, you know, very competitive manufacturing skills and capability. And Chinese competition is going to drive constant improvement in the Tesla product. We've seen it. We're going to see more of it. And it's an exciting time for Tesla to be part of that, that community. Good. Thank you so much, Larry. Follow him on X at Tesla Larry. Appreciate you, Larry. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.